So we've done the hot towel, the first hot towel, we've done the massage sequence, now we go on to the cold stone sequence. The cold stones are typically kept in the refrigerator so that they stay cold enough. You'll bring them in the room, when you know that you have this service to provide, you'll bring them in the room ahead of time, put a number of ice cubes, you can see here the ice cubes are melting, but the, uh, it keeps the stones nice and cooled for when you get to them, and we're going to use them in our, in our, next, uh, in our next demonstration. So the next step is the cold stone sequence. Now, we are careful with introducing the hot stones, of course, carefully. All the more important with the cold stones. We don't want to chill or startle the client. So this is the approach I recommend, and we're starting with the largest round stones first, uh, and we're going to distribute that cool to the body. So I'd recommend this approach. Back of the hands, edge of the stone. Back of the hands, edge of the stone. This allows the client to acclimatize. You might see a little bit of facial movement, mm -hmm. perfectly normal. That means that their nervous system is working and we appreciate that. So back of the hands, edge of the stone, and then when they're ready, place the stones. These round stones are great for broader areas, so below the collarbone here, up into the chest, and through the shoulders, we can, I'm just going to sneak your hair back out of the way here a little bit. We can use them on these broad muscles of the neck and shoulder. We can even place them. Now there's no risk of burning. Unlike the hot stones, there's no risk of burning. So we can actually sit with the cold stones for a little while. Let them sink into the jaw. This is very good for people who have jaw pain. And you want to transfer all the cold of the stone. So, of course, on the edge, use the edges of the stone. Try and transfer as much of that coolness, that temperature, as possible. So we have our second set of stones, the teardrop stones. They have an advantage where they have a, a pointed end and then a broad end. So there are a lot of surfaces that you can use these on. Now the person is acclimatizing to the cool, but I would start with the same way. I give the edge of the stone, back of the hand. Edge of the stone, back of the hand. And then when you're ready, place that stone and transfer that coolness. Now, unlike the massage sequence that we did, where I'm asking you to do it verbatim, exactly as I showed, you've got more creative license with these cold stones. So feel free to experiment. I like to use the corners of these stones above and below the collarbone. Trace the area. can also sneak up underneath that hammock of muscles below the jaw. You can use the broad ends in and around the muscles, the external muscles of mastication. Pointed ends again around cheekbones. It's something that is really helpful for headache sufferers is if you sneak, I like to get the broad ends facing each other, come up underneath the neck, lean back, a little bit of traction and let that broad cool area sit up at the base of the occipital bone. Right at the base of the head. Hotel cold stone treatments are really good for headaches, sinus congestion. And those are our teardrop stones. So the next stones are the crescent stones, the half moon stones. And they've got a concave side and a convex side. So lots of neat things you can do with these. Now these are small stones, they lose their cool quickly. So you really do, the person's already acclimatized, you can get right into work. Again, under the, you can use the hooks to get under the hammock of muscles. You can outline the cheeks. 
very carefully. You can come along the superior orbits above the eyes. Some therapists like to place the stones. Be a great selfie. Above or below. You can use the convex side. I've seen some therapists who work on the bridge of the nose, or they work they work on the forehead. Down through the temples. So lots of opportunity with these stones with the shape that they provide. So our fourth set of stones, the final set, are the small round stones. And again, the person is acclimatized, so we can get right into working the body. You can use the edge, like a pinwheel. You can use the edge of the stone, trace the jaw, the hairline. You can use the flat area, similar to the crescent stone, to work through the forehead. They fit really nicely in the temple area. And again, we're not going to burn the skin with these, so perfectly fine to sit there and let that cool sensation seep in. Jaw muscles. And this one's a little bit interesting. You want to certainly give your clients uh, a good description before you do this one, but we talked about tapping with the hot stones in terms of permeating in the body. Well, we can take these cool stones and think of the sinuses, the frontal sinus, the maxillary sinuses. We can take one stone and slowly and easily tap and try and resonate down into the chambers of the sinuses. Now, the person will blink, perfectly normal. That means they're autonomic nervous system is working, which is what we want. We can switch to the other side. Notice I'm pausing in between taps. Starting off slowly, building crescendo, and then easing off again. So this is a novel way to treat sinuses. Normally in massage we try to treat sinuses by opening up the circulation through the neck, trying to improve drainage, but this is a direct way, direct way to try and vibrate, trying to resonate into the chambers of the signs. And that's our last set of stones.